Steve Shuga, and we're here at Triple Creek Radio Controlled Aircraft Club, and today they're hosting the Fall Classic Helicopter Event. This is an extraordinary event, open to only helicopters. It's an FAI style, but they've also got a lot of guys that are doing 3D. Throughout the day, you're going to see some really impressive flying. We hope to interview some of the pilots, some of the spectators. Maybe we'll catch a few of the judges, and we're going to ambush pretty much anybody we can. So let's have some fun with it. Let's go out there and watch these helicopters do their thing in the skies. We're here with Nob Meraki. Nob is the one that set up this whole thing. Nob, tell us a little bit about this uh, Fall Classic helicopter event. Well, we've been having, uh, this is third D, I I believe, so, and uh, basically we want to have uh, 3D pilots and then the contest pilots all together. Are these, are these heavy winds causing these guys a little bit of a problem? Yes, it is, um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit about the uh, the pattern flying, the FAI. T explain that to us. Okay, it's a more precision, like a figure skating, and a more pre precise uh, location to see precise um, kind of. If you're gonna do pirouette, the constant, and same, same speed, and same altitude. That's what judges look for, just like figure skate. And then based on what it should be, it should be perfect ten for the each maneuver. And then judges deduct each point, whatever they mess up. So they start with the 10 and go down from there. And go down here from there. Well, Nob, I know you're busy and I know you got things you got to get to. We thank so you very much for your time. The judges for this helicopter fall clack event. Larry, when you're, what are you looking for out there with those pilots? Well, Steve, we actually look for uh, uh, precision of the maneuver. And that is in the position of the helicopter uh, as it relates to the center of the maneuver, uh, proportionally how the maneuver is done. And if they actually do the right maneuver, some people <laughs> do the wrong one. Of course, that gives them a zero. So they, they start out with a 10 and then go down from there? Well, you start out with a 10 and then you, you degrade from there. Nobody can afford a 10. Uh, not, not from me. Not from me. Yeah, I have a tip. I'm only judged with a tip jar. And uh, that doesn't work, so I think I'm going to start billing for, for certain. Numbers are very, very high. I'm just going to bill them for it. Has the wind been affecting these guys today? Uh, it affects them some, but it doesn't affect the scoring that much because everybody's on the same uh, level playing field. So, but it it is moving around pretty good, including the judges' papers. Do you have any tips for anybody that would be a judge want to be a judge for one of the events? Uh, take up take up knitting. <laughs> no, it's uh, nothing to it. Um, it's uh, it's a lot of fun, really. I. Uh, I don't have any tips other than just uh, listen to what the pros tell you and uh, go from there. Uh, the biggest tip, the biggest thing is it doesn't matter how accurate you are as long as you give everybody the same treatment. And that's that's the secret to it. So. Well, I know you're a very fair judge. I know you've done this three years in a row now, and uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. You're quite welcome, Steve. We're here with Kay Atkins. Kay is another one of the judges for this event. Kay, tell us a little bit about judging. Well, it's a lot of fun. This is probably my third or fourth year, and it's it's pretty interesting. You just have to learn the maneuvers and learn what the differences are between the sportsman and the advanced and the, the big guys. It's pretty windy today. How's that affecting the judging? Well, it's a little cold out there, too, and a little windy. Their hoppers are a little bit all over the place, especially the beginners, but... Um, and you have to allow just a little bit, but the for the um, the big guys, you have to realize they need to learn to fly in this, so you judge them accordingly. I see you've got a shirt for support for these guys. Tell us I a little do. About that. It's my new shirt I got yesterday at Monster Planes, which is basically my life: eat, sleep, and fly. Well, Kay, I know you're busy, and I know we dragged you away from your lunch. Is there any advice you have for someone that would like to be a judge? I'll just take. Take the forms home, you can download them, study them, figure out exactly what it is, and just uh, consistency. If you judge everybody the same and pay attention to what they're doing, you'll do a good job. Thanks so much, Kay.
We're here with Gina Tucker. Gina's kind of a rare bird. This is a young lady that flies. We don't see a lot of these uh, girls flying helicopters. Gina, how long have you been flying helicopters? Just under two years. Uh, January will be two years. What else do you fly? Mostly my T-Rex 600N, but I also have a Synergy N5, uh, and I also have a T-Rex 500, and a T-Rex 450. They, I like the fly barless simply because of stability. Um, they just feel a whole lot more locked in than the fly barred machines did when I first got started. And uh, for somebody like me who hasn't been in the hobby for very long, the fly barless is just a tremendous help in, in learning the process, you know, of learning how to fly these things because, because of the stability. Have the winds been uh, difficult to fly in today? Today, no. It's only been about between 18 and 20 miles an hour, so it hasn't been kicking me around too much. But uh, I'm used to it because the little hill that we fly on in Sebring, um, the, the average wind speed around there is between 6 to 10 miles an hour, gusting at 18 to 20 all the time. So I, I'm pretty used to it now. Gotcha. So if you had any advice for a young lady that was getting into this hobby, what kind of advice would you give them? Well, um, just take your time, uh, do it right, make sure uh, you get your hover orientations down first, um, make sure you can hover nose in, side in, both sides, tail in, um, and uh, before you start trying to do any kind of forward circuits because it will cost you money. And uh, uh, start off with the largest helicopter that you can possibly afford because the larger the helicopter, the more stable they are. And I started with a 450, and, and it was a clone of the T-Rex 450, and it was a really bad helicopter. And it just didn't fly right, and my learning curve was almost downhill. So I would suggest buying a good quality uh, helicopter, a line or Gowie or uh, something like that, you know, to get started with, and, and 500 size or bigger, preferably. That sounds like some really good advice. We appreciate your time. Go out there and show those men how to fly these things. I'll try. I'll give it my best shot anyway. Thank you so much. Jim. Thank you. Triple Creek Fall Classic with Justin Cook. Justin, you are an absolutely amazing pilot. You push that goblin through the air like nobody's business. How old are you, Justin, and how long have you been flying? About, I'm uh, nine and a half, and I've been flying about a year. A year? That's just amazing. Tell me a little bit about that helicopter that you're flying. That's a goblin? Oh, uh, yeah. The, that's the goblin. I have Savox servos. I have a, a Line 750MX motor in it, and I have a Beast X and Pulse batteries. That's about it. I noticed you fly some really heavy 3D. How long did it take you to learn that 3D? What would you suggest to somebody wanting to learn to be as good as you? Uh, I'm not sure. You put a lot of time in the simulator? Yeah. Tell me about your simulator. What, what's your routine on a simulator? I just try new stuff and try to do it like here and stuff at Fun Flies. So. You go to a lot of Fun Flies? I'll tell you, you're an absolutely amazing young man. We're going to get some video of you pushing that thing through the air. You got any sponsors? No. You should have. You're incredible the way you fly that thing. If you don't have them, you will after this. Okay. Where do you normally fly, Justin? Uh, West Pasco. West Pasco. What kind of a field you guys got up there? Uh, it's small. It's really small. How's this event been for you? It's. I like it. Nice and big field. Big field, a lot of room. Well, fantastic, Justin. We won't take up any more of your time. We want to get out there and see you fly that thing. Thank you. Thank you. John Cook. This is Justin's dad. You have got to be one proud father. Uh, I'm amazed. He makes me look bad. And uh, 
the way he picked it up is unbelievable. Tell us a little bit about that. How did you get him into helicopters? I had neck surgery about a year ago. I was bored, went and picked up one of the little three-channel helis, you know, the $29 ones. Let him play with it. Then from there, he's like, oh, I want a little bigger one. Got him the SR-120. He started flying that around like it was nothing. So I built him an inexpensive EXI 450 fly bar just to get him going. And uh, it went from there. You know, it's the, oh, I can't do it, Dad. I'm like, Justin, I can't fly. He's like, just, you know, take it easy, take your time. And within a matter of months, I told him, you get inverted with it, we'll go pick you up a 550. And from there, between that and having the Phoenix, he's just escalated. Now, I've been told that he uh, watches television while he flies the simulator. I caught him the other night. He's watching the... Uh, SpongeBob and doing a whole routine on a sim. I'm like, what are you doing? He's like, doing a routine. I'm like, you're not even looking. He's like, I don't have to. I, I can feel it. I mean, he's inches off the ground. I'm like, how can you do that? Every now and then, you get a little glance back to it. So I guess he's training his fingers. He's got the, uh, the ability. What's his mother think about his helicopter ability? She's proud of him. She'd be out here if she could be out here, but she's got skin cancer, so she really can't be in the sun. But, uh, She's happy. The deal is he does good in school. He gets rewarded by flying, and if he passes at the end of the year with good grades, he gets a new heli. Fantastic. So we uh, encourage him, keeps him out of trouble. He can't play sports, so this is the next best thing for him. So, John, we appreciate your Thank time. You. Thank you so much, and we're so glad that you're able to do that with your son. Yeah, we love it. Every chance we get, we're out here flying. So, Mike, how long have you been flying helicopters? Uh, a little over a year over a year. Well, you uh, seem to have mastered it pretty well. What's the secret? Uh, lots of practice. You do the simulator? I do. I have the Phoenix Flight Simulator. Fly it all the time. Now, you're one of the uh, pilots that's entered in this event today? Yes. How you doing, do you think? The wind affecting you? Oh, a little bit. Uh, the second flight was definitely windier than the first. Tell us a little bit about this helicopter. You're flying a T-Rex 700? Yep, T-Rex 700E. Pretty much, uh, pretty much, um, uh, Normal setup, got a uh, 12 cell in it, uh, running pulse batteries. They seem to hold up pretty good uh, in this flight. We got the, uh, uh, we got the Futaba, Futaba 750 uh, gyro in it, working really good in this wind today. Now that's the fly barless. What do you got to control that fly barless? What's your gyro on that one? I've got the uh, running the Futaba 750 in it. Okay, that so that controls the 3D, uh, the uh, fly barless also? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, thank you, Mike. We appreciate your time. We're here with uh, David with Elite Performance. David's one of the vendors here at the Triple Creek Fall Classic Helicopter event. David, how are you doing today? And tell us a little bit about your uh, your uh, hobby shop. Not too bad, not too bad. Um, we're based out of Tampa, Florida, uh, down here today at Triple Creek, uh, enjoying the, the beautiful weather here. Um, but uh, a little bit uh, shop uh, that I got is um, uh, specialized more in um, uh, higher-end RC product. Uh, I personally specialize uh, in the heli side, uh, set up, building, um, flying, whatever it takes to uh, get a customer's business and help them out. Tell us a little bit about this really extraordinary mobile trailer you have here. I uh, just uh, kind of uh, used to race motocross, um, kind of can't afford to be hurt anymore, and uh, kind of convert, basically converted it over to um, you know, a mobile shop, and it kind of stays at the side of the house for a workshop too, so it's kind of multifunctional. This thing looks like the ultimate man cave. I see you've got a flat screen and a refrigerator. Yeah, flat screen, uh, refrigerator, generator, uh, satellite TV, uh, generator. So uh, it's kind of all in one for the weekend. If somebody wanted to buy something from you, what kind of a website? What's your website address? Uh, we are uh, tampahobbies.com, elite-performancefl.com. Uh, they can uh, find us there and uh, get all the information that they need. David, thank you so much for your time. We appreciate it. Not a problem, not a problem. with Alex Fernandez. Alex, uh, you're one of the uh, pilots here at this Fall Classic Heli event. Uh, how's this been going for you today? Uh, so far so good. Uh, just uh, breaking in some new batteries uh, and I got uh, one or two that I'd like to really drive hard from time to time. Yeah, speaking of batteries, I see you have a really unique uh, charging case. Tell us a little bit about that case. Uh, well, it's, um, it's uh, basically a storm case uh, with uh, two uh, PL8 chargers. Um, and they're powered by uh, three Cosell 24-volt power supplies within uh, parallel. 
Now that looks like carbon fiber. What is that in there? Is that carbon fiber? No, it's actually uh, 3 8 inch plywood with the uh, carbon fiber sticker on it. You know, it's a sheeting that uh, you can buy off eBay and make it look nice. But, Faux uh, carbon fiber, huh? Yeah, yeah, it's not real carbon fiber. I see you're flying a goblin. Tell us a little bit about that helicopter. Uh, it's nice. It's nice. Uh, it flies great. Um, it's fast. Uh, it's a little heavy, but uh, you don't feel it. With those 630 blades and 3800 uh, mop packs, you know, from 12S config, you don't feel the weight. How's the wind affecting you today? Uh, I, you know, it's a little windy. Um, you know, it makes you a little un nervous because sometimes, you know, you see the plane, the, not the plane, <laughs> the heli drop underneath real quick, and, uh, but you got to react fast enough, and, but it's not too bad. How long have you been flying helicopters? Uh, going to be three years. Three years? Yeah. You into the 3D, I can tell. Yeah, I'm still practicing. Still got a long ways to go. Long ways to go. Yeah. Well, Alex, thank you so much. We appreciate your time. You're welcome. Thanks. We're here at the Triple Creek Fall Classic Helicopter Event with Griffin Morale. Griffin, how long have you been flying helicopters? About a year. About a year. What helicopter do you fly? T-Rex 550. Tell us a little bit about that T-Rex 550. Um, it's really fast and loud. Fast and loud. Do you fly gas or electric? Uh, electric. You fly electric. Tell us a little bit about that electric helicopter. Um. Well, it it can do 3D, and I do 3D with it, um, and it's fast. It's fast, huh? Really fast. How long have you been flying? Uh, about a year. Now, how old are you? Uh, 12. 12 years old. Do you a lot of, do a lot of time in the simulator, or how did you learn? Uh, yes, I do do a lot of time in the simulator, and I also learned on that uh, Blade MCPX. What would you recommend for a young lad trying to get into this hobby? Um, a Blade MSR or a Phoenix RC. Phoenix RC. Where do you normally fly? Um, Can-Am. Can-Am. Tell us a little bit about Can-Am. Well, it, they have a really big field, and they're very nice there. Um, and they do a lot for the people that fly there. Excellent. So, Griffin, I understand your father's not here. He's missing all this fun. What do you got to say to Dad? Um, that I wish you were here right now because you're a very good flyer, and I miss you. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much, Griffin. Thank you. Faster than an atomic submarine. <laughs>